my friends, I've got another problem for you. 2D system equilibrium. We're finding the reactions at the supports today, and we have a new thing today, okay? And that new thing that we have today is this. It's called a two-force member, okay? What is a two-force member? <laughs> a member with two forces on it. Yes, I know, okay? So here's a two-force member. Okay. Um, two-force members can be generally can be in tension, or they will be in compression. Okay. And what you have is think about the lot. The, the important thing on two-force members is the line of action. Okay. So here's the line of action. Okay, on forever and ever, okay? So there's, there's two forces in the fact that there's one on each end and they're on the same line of action and they're in opposite directions. So two force members either exist in tension or in compression. Now there is such a thing as a zero force member, which means that two force member has no force whatsoever in it, but two force members generally, you're gonna have them in tension or in compression. They're either pushing or pulling, okay? Now they come in a lot of sneaky shapes, so you got to watch out because sometimes they'll do this to you. Okay. Okay, you've got something like this, and maybe this is like pinned to a deal, and then there's a bar or something that goes, you know, off that way, right? That is still a two-force member because how does the force get transmitted from that point up to that point? Well, it doesn't, you know. If I have a curved bar and it goes around and it comes back and it attaches to you, right? If I just pull straight on it, you're coming straight to me. You're not going to go like around the bar, are you? All right? So what happens is that force is transmitted just like that. So let's say it at something like that. And so this bar would be in uh, tension. And so you'd have something like this, right? Okay. And so... <clears throat> And so two force members can be a, what I call them sneaky two force members, right? Sometimes they're just like this. You know, a pair of pliers is mashing on a bolt. Well, the bolt then becomes the two force member, right? It just pushes on the, in each direction. So a two force member, if you compress him, what does he do? He pushes on you. If you stretch him, what does he do? He pulls on you, right? That's all it is. So two force members in compression are pushing on you. Two force members in tension are pulling on you. Two force member, how do you identify them? Here's how I tell you to identify them. Okay, a two force member has, has a, it's pin connected at both ends. And number two, there are no other forces or moments on it, okay? There's no forces in the middle of it, none, okay? Pin connected at both ends, no force in the middle, okay? Those two things are always true. And if you have those two things, then you should say to yourself, man, I got a two force member. And what does a two force member do to you? It takes away an unknown, right? You go from like having an AX and an AY to knowing the direction of, that the member is gonna act. Because I always know the line of action that it's gonna act on. So in this case, instead of having like this, right, a X, a Y, and having two unknowns, instead I have this, right? I just have some force, and I know this angle already, right? So I can resolve it into two components, right? This one's T, or F cosine theta, that one's F sine theta, but there's still only one no unknown, that's F, okay? So a two force member is good, it takes you from two unknowns to one unknown. So ever, if you draw a free body diagram, you say to yourself, self, I got too many unknowns in this problem. You probably have a sneaky two force member that you need to go find. You need to put on your glasses and go see him, right? Because he's in there, because that'll eliminate one of your unknowns. So let's see if we can work this problem. Number one, do you see a two force member? Pin connected at both ends, no force in the middle. Yes. Member CB is a two force member, okay? So if I'm pulling on this system over here, uh, right, down, you think CB is in tension or compression? I think he would be in tension. So he's going to be, if I stretch it, 
he's going to be pulling back on me, right? All right. So we got to look at this problem because it, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, a student would say, oh, pin connection there, X and Y. Pin connection there, X and Y. And now I've got four unknowns in a 2D problem when I only have three equations. That's ungood, okay? So that two-force member, you got to be able to spot them, okay? So let me draw the, the free body diagram for this problem. It looks just like this. All right. Can you take a second and put the uh, proper arrows on there? Push pause and put the arrows on that free body from this um, where I have a perfect free body diagram. Then I'll draw it and we'll see if we got the same thing. Push pause. All right, are you back? All right, let's see. If you got it right, let's see if I, I can look the same one you did. So first thing I'm going to do, obviously, I'm going to put on the, the external loads that are just given. Okay. So there's a two kilonewtons. And there's a burrito force, four kilonewton meters. Okay. All right. Then I got A down here is a pin connection. Okay. So we've got a AY, AX. I'm not going to put the arrows on there just yet. I'm going to assume as I pull down on this, this guy is in tension. So tension members are going to pull on me, so I have this. And that is a BC. Okay? And I, and I know, I know this angle here, I think, right? Um, yeah, because this is, there's a triangle right here, right? triangle right here. This side of the triangle is 150 and this side of the triangle is 200. So I can find that angle, which is this angle here. Okay. So we can find that. Um, let's see. This force goes down. That force goes down. So what does AY have to do? Got to go up. This force goes to the left. So AX has to go to the right. One hop this time. Mm. Okay, and that's it. So we got a little bit, of, we need to find that angle. Let's find that angle. Okay, got my calculator here. That angle is opposite over adjacent, inverse tan, right? So 150 divided by 200 equals, and then inverse tan of that is equal to 36.87 degrees. Okay, that's a three, four, five, isn't it? Okay. 36.87. Look, if you double two, it gives you what? Four. If you double one, 150, what does it give you? Three, right? It's a three, four, five. Okay? We can do it like this if you want. This is the three side. This is the four side. Let's do that. That'll be easier than an angle on it. Okay? Because this guy here has two components, right? This is a... Uh, Three fifths TBC. This over here, this guy right here, is four fifths TBC. Okay, dude, how easy is this gonna be? Easy as pie. Okay, so like I said, the number one place you're gonna want to start out on problems most of the time on these reaction problems, on any problem of statics, is with a moment, because you can take the moment anywhere you want. So always take the moment where you can knock out the very most unknowns, right? So in this case, I've got two unknowns at A. I think I want to take the moment there, and I'll knock out AX and AY, and that'll only leave me TBC. It's the only unknown left. So I'm going to find TBC in one step. I like, I like that. I don't like equations with two unknowns in them. So here we go. Summing the moments at point A. Okay? This being positive. And see what we got here. Okay? Take the moment here. Um, first, I have a, a, a burrito force, right? He's drawn clockwise, which is negative, so just negative four, okay? And then I've got this two, which rotates me <whistles> negative. So minus two times how far away? Well, I don't know. Let's see. From here to there is 200, and from there to there is 400, so from here to there must be 200. This is 200. Okay, all right, so times 200. Ooh, you know what?
that's not good right there, what I'm just doing right there. It's not good. What, what was wrong with what I just did? Okay, look at this guy. What is that? Kilonewton meters, right? And then I just did this, right, which is kilonewtons. Two is kilonewtons. And then what's the 200? Millimeters. So that's a kilonewton meter. That's a kilonewton millimeter. Dude, that will mess you up, right? The easiest thing to do there is let's, let's just turn all of our millimeters into meters and then everything will be in kilonewton meters, okay? Woo, man, you almost messed that up, Dr. Hansen. All right, here we go. Next, so we got that guy and that guy. Now we need these two over here, right? Let's do the four fifths. He rotates me zoop, clockwise. So plus four fifths, TBC. Ooh, times how far away from point A is that? From here to there, 200. Okay. Oh, almost did it again. Not 200. Erase, erase, erase. Point 0.2, right? Point 0.2. Okay, and then the last one is this guy right here, which rotates me. Put my finger A, counterclockwise, that's positive. Plus 3 fifths TBC times how far away is it from there up to there? From here up to here is 200, isn't it? Point 0.2 again, okay? So now all we have in there in that equation unknown is TBC. Okay, so let's see what we got here on. We got four plus two times 0.2, which is 4.4. So I'm gonna move these negatives to the other side. Okay, so 4.4 is equal to, and then I wanna do that over there, 0.8 times 0.2 equals plus 0.6 times 0.2 equals 0 0.280 TBC, okay? And therefore, let's do a little dividing there. 4.4 divided by 0.2A equals 15.71. So TBC equals 15.71 kilonewtons. Okay? So there's one of the reactions. Well, it's actually the force in this member here, right? So if I ask you what's going on at point C, here's what's going on at point C. Here's that pin connection, right? If it's pulling down on this end, what's it doing at point C? Pulling that way, right? So it has this, and I know what angle it is, right? It's 36.87 degrees, right? And it's 15.71, uh, okay? So whatever's going on at B is what's going on at C because it's a two-force member. It's the same on both ends, okay? Now, the only thing left to do is find what is AX and what is AY. Now, this is pretty easy because, look, AX, what is AX going to equal? How much stuff in the X direction do I have? I have that one and I have that one. So this one has to be equal to that one. Easy as that, right? So AX has to be equal to times 0.6. 9.43. Okay, I just multiplied 0.6 times TBC, which is right there, right? So now I know AX instantly. And, and that really and truly, what, that, what we just did right there, we just did the sum of the force in the X in our head. Okay, so there was our sum of the force in the X equation. So the only one we have left is the sum of the force in the Y, okay? And what do we have in the y direction? We have AY going up. We have minus 4 fifths TBC going down. And we got 2 going down. Whoops. Going down, that would be a minus. Uh-oh. Okay. And that's all we have. So what do we have there? We have 0.8 times 15.7 plus 2 equals. 14.56. Hey, Joe, excuse me. A Y equals 14.56 kilonewtons. Okay? So there's your reactions at A. There's the force in member TBC. And this is a very typical kind of 2D problem for chapter two. Okay? All right.
Two force members, that's going to come back over and over and over. Don't forget that. You're going to forget it. Don't forget it. Okay, I'll see you next time.